Glaucoma surgical training. Should trabeculectomies be required? Reevaluating the training of TRABS by Constance OKK. And these are my financial disclosures. Do you remember the rotary phone? Well, back in the day, it used to be the gold standard for communication. I mean, it worked. You could con connect with family across the country, uh, but it did take longer to dial and you might need to use an operator to get connected, but it definitely was immobile. Imagine if we were still using the rotary phone. No cell phones, no smartphones. Well, the trabeculectomy has been the gold standard for over 50 years for glaucoma surgery. It's been the go-to when we really need to get the pressure down despite maximal medical therapy. The question today is, glaucoma surgical training, should trabeculectomies be required? Many of you in a recent survey said yes, tra TRABS should be part of fellowship training. But today my position is to talk about TRABS not being required, but optional. And I'd like you to rethink TRABS as we go through my reasons why. The first reason is that TRABS have a lot of problems despite their triumphs. We all know that aggressive IOP lowering is very important in slowing down visual field loss. And our goal for glaucoma treatment is to preserve vision. But you and I both know that glaucoma trabeculectomies can cause a lot of complications. And those complications are often vision threatening. Even when the TRABs work really well, like in this study, where TRABs were compared to tubes, and the TRABs in blue showed a much lower IOP with less medication than tubes in orange. But at what cost? In the first year, up to 20% of patients lost greater than or equal to two lines of vision, and up to 40% at five years. The complication rates were also high at over 40% of either early or late complications. The laundry list of complications with trabeculectomy surgery is exhaustive, and both you and I have likely had experiences with sleepless nights because of something on this list with our patients that we we're trying to do no harm. Also, trabeculectomy is associated with less quality of life and less patient satisfaction because sometimes the eye doesn't feel good with blood dysesthesia or increase in ocular surface disease. We need to move forward and let go of this rotary phone in glaucoma surgery so we can find the smartphone. The number two reason is that we also have options, other options that we need to nurture and that we need to allow to evolve. It started, we're in a glaucoma renaissance that started in the early 2000s. Tubes are replacing traps. With a TVT study, we learned that tubes can actually be even more effective than trabeculectomies. And then over the last decade, we've been going through this explosion with microinvasive glaucoma surgery because we want safer surgery that's also effective. And these mixed procedures are showing to be effective, like the goniana procedures with the GAT. In this two-year study, it was found that patients who had primary open angle glaucoma had a 37% reduction, reduction in mean IOP, um, and then with patients who had secondary open angle glaucoma, the reduction was 49%. And we're doing better in terms of how we are studying these, um, these procedures with better trials like the HYDRAS, two prospective multi-center randomized trials showing the effectiveness of lowering um, IOP without, without drops. And this is showing uh, effectiveness after multiple studies and with longevity. It's also been shown that these um, procedures are also safe, safe and the safety being compared to cataract surgery alone with uh, vision being preserved and the complications being low and not vision threatening. The other options that are coming out are subconjunctival stents. And in many instances, these are starting to replace traps. We're still learning how to perfect this process, but you and I are, uh, uh, based on the survey, using these stents to replace trabeculectomies. SLT as a first-line treatment is also going to reduce the number of surgeries per being uh, performed. With a light study, we learned that using SLT first can actually decrease the number of patients who go on to need surgery. So with the tubes, with the MIGs, with the LIGs, with the uh, use of SLT, all of these factors are lowering the number of, 
uh, trabecular lectin is being performed, which will be less for our glaucoma surgeons, uh, our fellows, and also with less uh, patients, doctors who are retiring, who were trained in TRABS, there'll be less for our fellows and less is not actually a bad thing. Because what would we do if we didn't have all that time and attention towards the surgical uh, learning or the post-operative management learning? We'd actually have time to focus on other important factors. Uh, we'd be forced to perfect those options that we have now and focus on the patient selection, the surgical skill, and the post-operative management. And we'd have time to think about those next best options. If we did what we did in the last 10 years with MIGS, can you imagine what the next two, few decades will be look like? We need to be able to focus our approaches on finding mechanisms using newer technologies so that we can target our treatment. And then we'd also have time to focus on other ways to prevent severe disease, like the basics of awareness and education. We need to train our fellows better communication with between patients and doctors because patients are very um, important in the role of preventing disease. We also can focus on increasing diversity because glaucoma is a disease that affects a large population of people of color. Improving the uh, underrepresented minorities in the workforce can actually help and be part of the solution for reducing health disparities. And then all of these factors can lead to earlier detection and then our safer intervention. These problems can lead us to better options. So in conclusion, yes, we need to be thinking about these op options and paying attention to them because the movement of less traps is happening. It is inevitable and it's necessary so that we can move forward and so we can find that new smartphone for glaucoma surgery. No, traps should not be required, just optional for now. Thank you for your time and attention on these thoughts.